Hey folks, today is Friday, January 18th, 2019, as usual. It's me, Jake Baldino, here to talk about the video game news going on here in snowy New York today. That was the loudest yawn I've ever heard. Yeah, because you're boring me. Can you... <laughs> We do have a lot of news stories to get into, a couple of big exciting things. Uh, the first thing, let's just get the uh, elephant out of the way in the room. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 got its big reveal event yesterday, and we've got tons of new details and gameplay footage, and honestly, it looks pretty awesome. It looks gorier than ever, the fatalities look dope. We've actually thankfully gotten a lot of gameplay to really chew through, and impressions so far from people who were able to go hands-on uh, say that it feels better than Mortal Kombat 10, actually substantially different, despite looking fairly similar. Uh, meters are going to be handled differently. Now there's an offense meter and a defense meter that you can spend through separately. There is going to be a lot of emphasis on skins and character customization, uh, showing a lot of really cool looks for a lot of classic characters. Um, a lot of emphasis on Scorpion with no face mask, which makes me feel uncomfortable. We also have a good idea of how the story is going to go down. Uh, they showed basically the whole prologue. You can check that out if you're interested in the whole Mortal Kombat lore. I'm happy that they are providing single player experiences. That's what I loved about Injustice 2. That's what I loved about the previous Mortal Kombat, so that's good to have that. And not only that, they also announced that Ronda Rousey is doing the voice of Sonya Blade, which Honestly, seems like a cool pick. I will say, I wish they went a little further, like her doing the mocap or lending her likeness. I know they don't necessarily do mocap uh, like they would in the original Mortal Kombat games, but still, I think this is kind of cool. I, you know, honestly, like when they announce a celebrity in a game, a lot of times it's a marketing thing, but sometimes it's cool. I don't know. Who would you guys like to see? Do you think they're going to announce any more celebrities? I don't know for sure. I mean, considering the game is, you know, planned to be released in April, we don't know, uh, but we're also getting Scarlet, which was like a fan favorite DLC character. That's cool, but I'm just happy to see that they showed off tons of gameplay. We know what we're getting now, and it does look like a lot of fun. But moving on, now we got to talk about some bad news. Uh, EA has canceled another Star Wars game. This one mentally in my head, as far as I was concerned, I just assumed this was canceled already, but uh, Kotaku broke the news that EA Vancouver, the project they were working on was essentially, uh, they picked up the reins from when Visceral was canceled in Amy Henning's game, Ragtag, codenamed, uh, it was essentially canceled. Uh, they rebooted it to work on something new. It was codenamed Project Orca. Apparently, according to sources, it involved you playing as like a bounty hunter or a scoundrel and going to a bunch of uh, open world environments and doing stuff. So this could have been a potential huge open world Star Wars game that got shit canned. Apparently, Vancouver is going to work on a different Star Wars project, uh, but word on the street is that EA canceled this because it wasn't going to release soon enough and they needed a Star Wars project now. You know, I'm still really, really holding on to hope with Respawn's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order game that they're working on, the guys behind Titanfall. Uh, that's apparently still slated for holiday 2019, but we haven't seen anything yet, but I'm, I'm really hoping that's the one. It's a shame that just another freaking Star Wars project had to, uh, you know, fall on the pile. Considering EA is sitting on this license for like a 10 year deal, and we're already roughly six years into that deal and we've only gotten two Star Wars games. I think that is an absolute mishandling of the license. I, like one of the biggest deals, Star Wars games essentially could print money. Again, that's just me as an armchair guy. We're all saying this. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe Disney is making it more difficult to make these games. Who knows who's to blame? But from the outside, it's unfortunate because we're getting less Star Wars games than we could have. Game Informer actually recently compiled a list of all the canceled Star Wars games and it was just heartbreaking to read through. Again, that's where we're at right now though. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is pretty much our only hope. Sorry. Um, can I get a sweet and sour chicken lunch combo with white rice and a Coke? Three meals all together, right? Yes. Steamed up. Okay, you're about 20 minutes. Can, can you add steamed dumplings to that, please? I'm sorry. Moving on to some interesting tech news. Let's talk about the Mad Box again. A lot of you guys were really interested in this story. We talked about it about two weeks ago. Uh, a developer behind Project Cars decided to uh, invest money and develop their own console to compete with like PC and next generation stuff. Apparently it's gonna have some of its own uh, software, but it's gonna be able to run, you know, all the games and it's gonna be extremely powerful. And it was really, really lofty, super ambitious. And the first artist renderings of it that they put out were really, really cringy and over the top. Well, one of the heads behind Slightly Mad Studios has now posted an updated rendering of what the console will more realistically look like. And I think it still looks uh, pretty overdone. Interestingly enough too, especially considering how powerful they are saying this thing will be. Uh, now it's really, really small. It still looks like a PC ass thing if you ask me, but what I do like 
is the uh, the touch screen on the front that displays some info. I think that's pretty creative and a little different from what we have seen. But they said that this is going to be a close to final design, interestingly enough. So um, here you go, guys. You know, feast your eyes on what is going to be another console entering the space. Probably in a couple of years, if it does still pan out, I really, I still don't know what to think about this story. A lot of people are into it and a lot of people think it's gonna completely fail. If anything, I just look at like, you know, more options for consumers is always good and interesting. So well, let's see what they got. Also in stupid news, since I like to talk about dumb stuff, thank you guys for humoring me. Uh, Dusk, the game that the awesome retro first person shooter that we have talked about before uh, has announced some of their sales figures. Uh, specifically, they announced when the game reached 69,420 copies. But I digress. Let's move on to a surprise story, something I did not expect. Uh, Namco Bandai or Bandai Namco, they change it all the time. I don't know. Uh, they did announce a new Dragon Ball Z RPG game. We have no details about it whatsoever, but the Bandai Namco Twitter account tweeted that in 2019, they are starting work on a new game in the world of Dragon Ball Z. And yeah, apparently it is going to be an RPG and the mind it just goes to so many crazy places. Oh, what this could be. It could be totally awesome. I feel like Dragon Ball between fighters and just everything with the Broly movie has been seeing a resurgence, rightfully so. So I'm really curious to see what kind of game they could cook up here. Uh, because, you know, on Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Advance, we have gotten some cool adventure RPG style Dragon Ball games. So I can't wait. Now, just to keep you guys up to speed, we like doing this here. Uh, in case you missed any trailers, uh, what did drop this week, you can check it out. It's the Resident Evil 2 to trailer that you get at the end of the demo if you complete it and it highlights tofu and hunk being in the game in these separate little playable modes that are returning from the original resident evil 2 which i am really happy to see because it embraces the quirky weirder side of resident evil and i'm so happy that they haven't like forgotten you know their roots or where they came from you know uh, we also have a really good significant breakdown video of anthem a game that i still have not been convinced of or, or really understand what the deal is with it uh, we finally got a substantial breakdown of like how moment to moment gameplay works and, and quests and customization. And I'm, st I'm starting to get it. I still have a lot of questions, but at this point I am gonna check it out. It is also my job, but still. But speaking as games as a service type games that you know some people are just not gonna be happy about. We also got a good breakdown of The Division 2 and changes coming to multiplayer and the Dark Zone and stuff. If you are into The Division, I think it is worth checking out. It's actually pretty similar to the first Division, but just more refined and making more sense. No Clip put out a new video. They have been dominating lately. Uh, but they've got an interview with the creative director, of course, behind God of War, uh, breaking down a lot of stuff and is a really, really good watch. If you want to check out any of those trailers, of course, like everything else we talk about, it's all linked down in the description below. Uh, but moving on, I wanted to bring something a little bit different, a different news story here. Uh, last week, I did get to go hands-on and play three hours of Metro Exodus. Uh, so I've come away with some opinions. A lot of other people have put out press previews out there and I kind of feel in line with them. Uh, basically, it is more Metro. I'd say it doesn't look as amazing as the trailers make it out to be, but it does fulfill that Metro vibe, that feel, that more PC focused game. Uh, it's still very tense, stressful. I found a lot of situations where I didn't have enough ammo or a lot of oxygen. And interestingly enough, the open world stuff, uh, these open world sandbox style levels that you travel through, I got to check out the desert Caspian level and it was really, really substantial. You got to drive a vehicle around, essentially battling Mad Max style raiders to get more gasoline and water for your survivors that are traveling on a train across Russia. And the fact that it was like, you know, in a desert made it feel very, very different, but the mechanics and the creature design still made it feel like Metro. And I almost feel like the big open world stuff and the little side objectives that don't really give you much, I felt a little unnecessary. But the fact that you will be visiting so many different environments and they're all gonna have a different variety to them and the story seems really interesting still, I'm still willing to jump into this game. Because like I said, it's absolutely more Metro. It still is at its best when you're in dark corridors fighting spooky spiders with a lighter and a flashlight. That's that's one of my favorite sequences of what I did get to play. Basically what I'm trying to say is that when the game is Metro-y, it's awesome. And when it tries to do new stuff, I'm just still not totally convinced, uh, but the gunplay is cool. The tension is good and I'm gonna be there. Honestly, if you have any questions for me, uh, just hit me up on social media like Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino. I'll try to get to as many of you as I can. That's the gist of Metro Exodus without taking up too much time. If you wanna check out more about what I have to say, uh, link to my podcast because video games one word uh, is in the description but uh, another interesting news story uh, is about an update to Sea of Thieves a game that a lot of people are still playing and enjoying it's been receiving a healthy amount of updates uh, but this new update 
literally just cuts the file size in, in almost like an average of half. Every single version of the game is receiving a significant reduction in the amount of gigabytes it'll take up on your hard drive. And it's pretty cool. Apparently they've just figured out how to optimize it better. And uh, basically you have to download a, a, a big download update and then reinstall the game, but then it takes up way less space on your hard drive. That's pretty cool. I don't know, I just thought that was a very interesting story because you don't usually see updates like that. So say what you want about the game, but good on Rare. Oh, we also have a small, small update on Cyberpunk 2077. Not much, but there was an interview, thankfully translated by, I believe, Game Rant. This was an interview with CD Projekt Red's lead cinematic animator, and he went into detail uh, just in terms of the size of Night City and the world of Cyberpunk 2077, saying like he couldn't comment on how large it would be compared to something like The Witcher. He said that they are two very different games, how The Witcher is spread out across open fields, landscape, you're riding on a horse, whereas the world of Cyberpunk and Night City is way more vertical, so there's more of an emphasis on going in and out of buildings and just going up and up and into the skyscrapers and stuff. But interestingly enough, he did say that everything that they have developed for this game is not procedural. Everything has been completely handmade, completely designed and written and drawn and animated from the ground up, which is very cool to see if you're into that type of thing. I don't think this is like a big revelation for them or anything. It totally makes sense. It's in their wheelhouse, but small little detail, small little update. You guys are always asking me on social, like anything new? Well, this is what we got right now. Now, before we go, we do need to do that console giveaway we do every single week. You know how that goes by now. There's a link in the description below. You click it to sign up. You enter once, then you're entered for good. And then every single week we go and randomly choose one person to win a free console of their choice. And this week's winner is going to be this person right here. Congratulations, be sure to keep an eye on your inbox, your spam box, stuff like that, because uh, Tom's gonna be reaching out to you to figure out how we can send you your free shit. But now we gotta talk about everything going on this week. First of all, you know, what do you think of Metro Exodus from the outside looking in? Have you read any other previews besides just me blabbing about it? What do you think? Also, Mortal Kombat 11, dude, uh, what do you think about that? From the characters revealed so far, uh, who are you most looking forward to not only playing as, but also uh, customizing and building your own version of that character? How sad are you about more canceled Star Wars? Are you at the point now where you're like almost glad because now EA won't get their clutches on it? Or are you just like me that you're just desperate for anything Star Wars and you'll take what you can get? And of course, that freaking Madbox console. Have you read up on that story we talked about? Uh, what do you think capability-wise, but also now with its new revealed look? Uh, is that something you're into? I don't know. Let's talk about anything down in the comments. We'll be down there talking to you as much as possible. But of course, like I said earlier, if you got anything else from me, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino. But we gotta go. We got a lot more before you buys to work on. I'm working on uh, No More Heroes for Switch. Uh, also, hopefully, Ace Combat 7 if we could squeeze it in. So as of right now, that's it for me. Like I always say, thank you guys for coming around every Friday or even every Tuesday live, 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, to watch us talk about video games. We do appreciate it. Uh, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. But if you are new, number one, sorry. But number two, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me.